everyone. Thanks for being here with me today. Today I want to talk to you about a fun product called water painters. Now these are a small inexpensive product in our catalog, but they really allow you to do some amazing and beautiful things on your projects and create a watercolor look that looks like a professional has done it. So I want to share with you how to use these, some fun tips, some little secrets and, and fun tips and tricks that you may not have heard of before. So I hope you'll watch along. So here are our water painters. What these are is a paintbrush that dispenses water as you squeeze. And you can use them to create watercolor look backgrounds and elements for your projects. So the main uses are to color images on your projects, do backgrounds, and then create splatters. And I'm going to show you some samples here, and then we will actually create, I'll, I'll show you exactly how to create some of these here in a little bit. So for coloring images, here are a couple of samples. Uh, this one I stamped with black, this one I stamped with black brown, but on both of them, I've used the different colors of ink to fill in and do some shading and add just some really pretty and natural looking color. So those are some examples for how to color images. Let's look at some backgrounds. This one, you can see this real subtle uh, watercolor swoosh in the background. Did that with water painters. This one actually painted these stripes, which I love how this turned out. And this one as well, I painted this background. So show you some tips on how to create these beautiful backgrounds in a little bit. And then you can also create splatters. So here is a card that I did use the water painters to color these flowers, but then I also use them to create the splatter. So we'll talk about that. Now let's look at the three brushes because you get three in a set. This one comes with a fine brush tip. We have a more bold brush tip. Both of these are great for coloring images, just depending on the size of the area you're trying to color. You may want to use the larger one or the smaller one. And then we also have this flat brush tip as well. And this one is fantastic for backgrounds. So let me share a couple of my best tips with you and then we will get to some coloring and some action here so you can see these at work. So a few of my best tips. One, use be selective about your use of paper. These are most effective if you use them with either shimmery white cardstock, which is a little bit, ha has kind of a sheen on the outside of it. The water doesn't soak in right away. Or watercolor paper. And that's what I'll be using here in a minute to show you. Tip number two, if you are coloring an image such as these and you don't want your ink to fade, you need to use stays on ink. Um, I have gotten by using Memento before to stamp my image and then color them in, but Memento can start to bleed. And if you use our regular colors, the water base inks, they can bleed as well. Now that can be kind of a fun, fun way of doing it. I'll show you these. So these I stamped in the colors and then I just used my aqua painter with water in, in the tip. Uh, and I just did some little uh, accents or highlights, and you can see that actually caused that to fade. So you can use that to your advantage when you want to. But if you don't want the ink to bleed, you'll want to use stays on. Tip three, let's talk about how to fill them. So typically, put the cap back on here. Typically, you would think of unscrewing the top here from the base because this holds water down here. So you would think of unscrewing these counterclockwise, but that is not correct. You actually need to screw it clockwise to get this part to come off, and then you can fill the base with water. And then you have to remember to screw it back on counterclockwise. How to clean them. Once you get ink on these, and I'll show you in just a minute how to use them. Once you get ink on them, the way to clean them is basically just to color on some scrap paper until that ink comes out and your water runs clear again. So that's all you have to do to clean them. Very easy. And my last tip for something to try is to actually fill these with rubbing alcohol instead of water. So what rubbing alcohol does, it dries faster than water, 
but you should get a similar effect. So that's something you can play around with and see if you prefer how water looks and how water works or if rubbing alcohol works for you better. Now let's get to some coloring. So let's look at some images first. So I have these three different images stamped and this one is on watercolor paper. These are on shimmery white cardstock and I'm going to use this bold brush tip and as you can see I've stamped with some pink ink. This is polished pink and I am going to squeeze, squeeze here on the barrel of the water painter to get some water to dispense and just start coloring with this. Now I'm not using any ink at all as you can see but as I add some water the color is going to start to move around a little bit. So I'm getting some really faded pink here filling in between the lines where I stamped and I like that subtle look but if I want to get a little bit more sh shadowing and detail in there what I can do is pull in my ink and just grab a block put that down against the pad and now I can use this as my palette so I can squeeze some water on here till it drips out and then I can mix that around and mix as much ink as I want with that water to get the desired color that I want then I can come in and add some darker areas so I like to spread these out now I'm going to pull in some that I don't have much water at all mixed in with so this will give me some more darker areas if I wanted it to be really dark I could even come in with a darker color of ink okay so that gives you an example of how you can stamp with one of our colored inks that will bleed and will uh, allow you to move it around with the water painter. Now let's look at these. I stamped both of these with stays on ink. And I'll show you how I clean out the brush. So I just color right here on that paper until the water runs clear. Now let's look at the turtle and the little boy on the man's shoulders. So for the turtle, I am going to use old olive ink. And what I'm going to start to do is fill in between the, the narrow parts of the shell with the darker. And then I'm going to mix it with some water and dilute it a little bit to fill in the other areas. So here you can just get an idea of how I add that color and like to move it around. Now, if your brush tip gets a little dry, what you can do is just squeeze on a little bit. I do recommend doing that over some scrap paper because every once in a while, you'll get a drip that comes out the bottom and you don't really want that drip to fall on your project. So pick up some more ink. Now, if I want to get some real light areas, I can just make sure I only have a little bit of ink there on the brush then spread it out. What I love about the shimmery white cardstock is that the color really moves around really well with it. If you compare and you use regular cardstock or our thick white cardstock, the color is going to stay where you put it a lot more than on the shimmery white cardstock. On this, it really moves and flows and you can play around with it so it's not necessarily stuck where you initially apply it to, to the paper. This is that adorable turtle from her Back on Your Feet stamp set. I absolutely love him and the giraffe and the sloth in this set. And they have the most adorable sayings as well. So we get him colored here real quick. And then we'll work on the man and the little boy. So I stamped this one in brown and the one in black to give you an idea of the difference in your end result depending on which color you choose to stamp with. So I may not stamp the whole man, but we'll do part of it. So I have some pale papaya 
and some misty moonlight on this block right here. So we'll do a little bit of this just to give you an idea of what is going to look like. But this is just a really fun way of coloring. If you don't really like coloring with markers, if it's too precise for you, I'd really encourage you to try these water painters because they're just really, I feel like it's a really casual way of coloring. Uh, it, you don't have to be precise because nothing about the watercolor look is precise. It is just, just kind of carefree. You don't have to stay inside the lines. A lot of times watercolor goes outside the lines anyway. And I just think it's a fun way of coloring and you get some really pretty results. I hadn't really planned out my colors here very well, but so, we, so we're just kind of going with whatever happens here. We may as well finish this while we're here. So I will get a couple more colors and we will finish off. I think I'll give the little boy, let's see, we'll give the man a green shirt and we'll give him some blonde hair, I think. So this is some bumblebee ink. Should be a good blonde color, I think. And This should be some Just Jade with, I think, some Bumblebee left in. I'm not sure I got all that cleaned out, and that's okay. So with these, what you can do when your images have shadow lines marked on them, that is kind of a key for how you can go in and add extra shadowing, even if you are not a professional with this. So what I'm doing is picking up some ink without adding much water to it. And then I'm coming back in around those shadow lines, those black lines stamped in the image. And I'm adding more of that color without as much water. Then I, a lot of times, add extra dark at the base or like if it's a flower, if you can tell where the, the deepest part of the flower is, like the center of it usually, you can add some extra dark there. And there you can start to see how you can really get some neat shading with this, even without a lot of work. Now, just for fun, let's come back in and do a little bit more shading on his pants so that you can see the full, full effect of adding some of the shadows in. And you can just play around with this. You do not have to know what you are doing whatsoever. But as you play with it, you will get a feel for where some of those shadows can go. And really the fact that they can go kind of anywhere. And just having some of those lights and darks makes it look really neat. Let's add a little bit to the boy. And if you start to notice your color isn't blending as much as you would like, just squeeze a little bit, get a little bit extra water. And that color should move around for you as long as you're using the shimmery white cardstock. Okay. So I just love how this looks. So there you have some samples of how you can color images with the water painters. Now let's look at some backgrounds. And real quick, I'll show you these again. So a couple of my favorite ways to use these are with the swoosh in the background creating a design such as the stripes, and then just creating a block of color in the background that you can add something over top of. So for this right now, I just want to do the biggest basic swoosh because this is something you can use on tons and tons of cards and then place anything you want over top. You could just stamp a basic greeting over top like I did on this one. You could do a swoosh and then stamp something like some ferns or leaves over top. Or you can add some die cuts, some punches, some other pieces over top. So let's practice a swoosh. And for the swoosh, or for any of these backgrounds, my favorite one to use is this flat brush tip. And I am going to use, let's do some misty moonlight. So 
So I'll squeeze some water out of the brush, get it here on my block, get it mixed around some. And I just like to start going back and forth some. You can play around with this. You can look at some samples, try and figure out what kind of look you want. I really like to have the lights and the darks. So I have quite a few lights. I'm going to come back in, try and get some more darks in with this ink that didn't have as much water mixed in with it. Then if you decide you want that blended more, you can squeeze some water out in the tip, mix it around, go over it more. I could even add in some more darks if I want to. And I am going to because I usually find on projects that I like them the most when I have have a lot of color variation. So have some of those lights, but then have some definite darks in there as well. So that is a basic swoosh. Now, if you're going to do stripes, you can just get that color on the brush and paint your stripes across. You can go over each stripe a couple of times. That's what I did to get the nice blended look. And then for this one, basically you just paint that block of color and then go over it and add some darks, add some lights until it looks the way you want it. And then you can set it aside and let it dry or use your heat tool to heat it up and dry it a little bit faster. Now I'm going to keep the sample here because I want to show you how to add splatters. So clean this brush out, make sure it's nice and clean. And we will use the same color for some splatters. So I'm going to pick up some of that color. And when you do this, you may want to cover your work surface. It can be a little bit unpredictable where your splatters will be going. And it's very likely that some of them will end up in front of you. So if you have a wall in front of you, some of them may end up on the wall. So definitely cover up some things. It is nice that this ink is very easy to clean up. And you can just wipe it down with a wet rag if you get some splatters in places you don't want them. So pick up some ink on the tip. You're going to want to squeeze until you have quite a lot of water in the tip. So ideally, you're going to have almost a drip down here, but it hasn't actually dripped onto your paper. So I'm squeezing. I see some water coming out here, but nothing has dripped down onto my paper yet. So the tip of this is filling up. And I think I have some good water on there. So I just hit this against my hand and some of those splatters will start to fly off. Now I'm going to do this again, get some more water in the tip. And hopefully you can see some of these splatters showing up up some more ink. We'll repeat this a few times. You could even try this. There are some bigger ones that should be a little bit more noticeable for you. You can't even try this with that big flat tip brush if you want to and get some really big splatters. But this is just a fun way to add kind of a carefree abstract look. And I'll pull this one in again here. Actually I have two pieces, the card and a frame piece that goes with it that have some of those splatters on them. But this is a technique I've used quite a few times and I really like how it looks. So that is what I have to share with you about the water painters. They're a really fun tool. You can get beautiful results with them. Before we go, I have one more tip to share that doesn't have as much to make to do with making cards as it does with sending them. So if you ever get tired of licking envelopes, Here's a fun tip. Next time, use your water painter to paint the glue part, the adhesive part of your envelope, and you can seal it up without having to lick it. So there's a fun tip. If you've had these, probably a fun tip of a way to use them that you may not have heard before. Thanks so much for joining in. If you're interested in learning more about these or ordering, you can find a link in the video description below. I hope you have a wonderful day. Please like, comment on my video, and subscribe. Send me a comment. Let me know you, what you would like to see in upcoming videos. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you again next time when I'll be back helping you to hand make with love.